and we're hoping for a better fight. We haven't seen one yet. Two fights out of a possible 14 rounds. Neither one went one round. This one scheduled for 10. There's the Ukrainian lion on the left. He's on a fast track to a title shot. He fights often and he fights well, undefeated at 160 pounds. His opponent, there he is, Jorge the Destroyer Melendez, a 92% knockout rate. 26 of his 28 wins have come by way of knockout out of Puerto Rico. He's heavy handed and he's a former WBO G Latino Junior middleweight champion. As for Hitroff, this is his first ever scheduled 10 round fight, but none of his prior fights have gone the distance. You see 2012 Olympian for Ukraine. He now lives in Brooklyn, New York, but he's from Krivoy Roque, Ukraine. And look at those amateur accolades, gold up and down the list, including a gold medal at the World Championships in 2011, Ted. You know, you just said something. You said scheduled for 10. I'm going to tell the fans out there right now, this is not going 10. Hopefully it goes longer than one. Can we get a can we get a two? Maybe. All right. Well, it's time to look like a champ. Brought to you by Just for Men, Teddy. What do you expect? Oh, let's start with Petrov. Oh, no, let's start with Melendez. Land something early to try and slow him down. You're going to have to slow this guy that's just going to look to run you over. And Petrov, oh, he's too small for you. So go crush his body. Evgen Hitroff probably uh, believes in the same okay, Jen, motto that Ronda you. Rousey Rousey believes in. You know, she won 14 seconds last points. weekend. Okay, she says right maximum here, efficiency, okay. minimal effort. Right That's what here, Hitroff has okay. done so he far. All eight of his wins coming before the, the fight goes the distance. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourself at all times. Let's put your man, put that thing, listo, let's go. We Melendez, asked, Melendez is a welterweight and junior middleweight his entire career, while Hedroff has been between 160 and 165 pounds, Todd, his entire career. I mean, he's a big middleweight. Well, I just think that Hedroff is just too big and strong for him. We're going to find yeah. out. I asked Hitroff what round he thought this fight would end. I thought he'd say one or two, but he said, I think it goes at least four. We'll see. That's, as both men love to throw bombs. That's generous of him. Melendez has been inactive nine months, so getting out of the gate is going to be tough for him. He's got a little rust going, and if I was in the corner of Heatroff, I'd remind him of that. This guy hasn't been in the ring for nine months. He might be able to... You know, get on him before he gets rid of some of that rust. And strange punches there. There's a right hand Melendez, by Hitroff. Melendez was on the floor in his last fight. And I'm going to guarantee, and that's tough to do, but I'm going to guarantee he's going to be on the floor again tonight. Well, at least I think, obviously, he's going to be on the floor again tonight. Don't forget, Melendez has put many people on the floor as well. 26 knockouts in his 33 career fights. He believes that he can provide a very stiff test for the Ukrainian. Take him into deep waters, late rounds he's never been in before. Dietrich likes to go to the body. And again, he's got a smaller man in front of him. That body would make sense. Put some water in the basement of Melendez. Notice a lot of Ukrainian fighters come out with a very strong knockout power background. They're, most of them are very aggressive. I asked him about that, and that's how he said you get out of Ukraine. Everyone fights that way. Made me think of how baseball players come out of Dominican Republic and Cuba. They say you got to hit your way off the island. You don't make it to the United States by walking or hitting singles. You got to hit home runs, and you got to be flashy. Well, right now, Hitrov has to use his jab. And that's why. You use your jab, it gets you in that front door, and then you can finish with the right hand. We're already seeing Melendez stumbling around a little bit. Petrov's punches are certainly taking an effect early here in round one. Well, he's not wasting much. The only thing he's wasting a little bit of heat trouble, he's paying no price for it. He's making head movements sometimes from a little too far away. Watch him. 
Every once in a while, he'll make that head movement a little too soon. You shouldn't do that because you're not close enough, really, to punch. You should get close enough to draw the punch, in position to punch, so when you make that movement, you can make that movement mean something, where you can punch back. But if you're making a movement from too far away, you're gonna get caught, you're gonna get timed. And you handcuff yourself a little bit. Stop, 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 stop. Looks like for the first time tonight, you can score around on our Friday Night Fights Facebook page, or go to fnfvotes.com. We're about to see a round two, Teddy. I almost forgot what they looked like. I remember what you looked like. You're still here, Teddy Atlas, alongside Todd Grisham, coming up tonight in our main event, Tony Harrison. What do you like about him? Well, I like a lot of things. I like that he's undefeated, but what I'm thinking about, the theme for this is obviously in two months, he got the biggest fight in the history of the sport coming up, and tonight, the biggest fight in the career of the undefeated Harrison against the veteran Antoine Smith. And you know what? Harrison, believe it or not, has a couple of things in common with the guy who's going to be involved in the biggest fight in the history of the sport, Mayweather. He's undefeated, and he was born in the same state. But if he's ever going to get anywhere near the stratosphere of the earning power of Floyd Money Mayweather, it starts tonight. He's got to win tonight, and he's got to win big and impressive, in my mind, against maybe the best opponent to date, Antoine Smith. I'd even say that he needs to score a knockout. So I'm really, I'm really interested to see the talent of Harrison and to see what he does on this stage. Well, Harrison's very good at providing knockouts. 19 and 0, 16 coming by way of KO. Right now, Evgen Hitchroff taking on Jorge the Destroyer Melendez. Melendez, a seven year pro out of Puerto Rico. Says no one will fight him at 154. They're scared of his power. That's why he's fighting at 160 tonight. Says a win over Hitchroff will put him in a bigger fight very soon. But right now, it's certainly the Ukrainian who's shining brightest. Nice body shot there by Melendez. Fighting fire with fire a little bit, Melendez. He figures, look, I'm gonna move on this guy. He's strong, he's powerful, he's younger, he's bigger, but I'm not gonna move on him. I'm gonna fight fire with fire. And you know what? It's gonna be fun to watch to see who gets burned. And this will be entertaining, I think, right up to the moment it ends. Because you don't have to look for either guy. Even though he threw off his undefeated, he's right there, right in front of you. Defends on, depends on offense a little bit for his defense. And there he goes making those moves from too far away. It's gonna get him in trouble. He drove, makes those moves, Todd, too far away. And when you do that, again, you give your opponent a chance to time it. And you handcuff yourself because you can't do nothing when you're way out there making those moves like that. All you do is you wind up getting tracked down as Melendez just tracked he drove down after those moves with his jab, like that. And we're not used to seeing Hitchoff taking steps backwards. He's always on the front foot, but Melendez, at least for a moment there, had him backing up. And a body shot there from Melendez, who's starting to at least find some confidence, Ted. He's finding confidence, but he's taking heavy leather. But he's giving some back to his credit. He is a veteran, seven years a pro. Hitchoff, on the other hand, just eight professional fights. He's 26, but 500 amateur fights. And remember, if we get there, if we get there, Hitchoff has never been past five. Melendez has been 10 rounds four times. So we're talking about all the advantages early on of Hitchoff. He could get to a place where he has disadvantages. Giddy, <laughs> see the third round. I, I didn't know it was that easy to make you happy. That's great. That is great. Love to see you happy. <laughs> and you know, Melendez has been knocked out twice. So in some ways, there's a little pressure on Heathrow. He's aware of it. I'm aware of it. Don't think that Heathrow's not aware of it. 
little pressure on him in his mind that if he's going to be thought of and talked about as the next great thing or, you know, a prospect to really be excited about, there's pressure for him to get rid of Melendez the way two other people in the career of Melendez have gotten rid of. And those two other people, they're not people that you're going to really hear about. He was knocked out by a 12, 15, and 1 opponent and by a 13, 22, and 4 opponent. So, yeah, there should be a little pressure probably on Heatroff to stop Melendez. And there's those head movements again. Now he's taking a step on the jab. That's what he needs to do, Heatroff, but not make those head movements out in space. Melendez not taking advantage. I don't think enough of Heatroff making those head movements too soon. Watch him make them. Well, that time he stepped in with the jab. What would you like to see him do, Melendez? I'd like to see him when he sees Heatroff making those head movements, basically shadow boxing from too far away. Step in and nail him. Time him. Like that. Right there where he's making those head moves. Step in and catch him. Don't let him get away with that. Look, he's moving from too far away. That's what you got to do. Track him down. Melendez vowed to dictate the pace of this fight and to let his hands go and see what happens. Not sure he's done either yet. I hope Melendez has a good man taking care of cuts and swelling in the corner because a little swelling under the left eye of Melendez, I'm starting to see it. Melendez has been cut over his left eye before. He's been knocked down four times in his career and knocked out twice, as you mentioned. We're thinking about condition now that is starting to go rounds. Melendez came in the heaviest weight he's been in five years. He says he feels stronger at 160, but what fighter doesn't say that when they're coming up from 154? Oh, nice uppercut. Catch sit, sit no, actually, he missed. Heatroff stepped out just in time, and even that one, that right hand, was blocked. But Heatroff stepped out and made it miss. That was a good effort. What he should do is do a little bit like Holyfield did with Buster Douglas, step out, make that uppercut miss, then step right back in with the left hook and make the guy throw it and pay. We're headed to round four. Saul looked a little nervous there. Was he okay? Looked a little pale. Nah, he's okay. He was fine. I mean, he took some of that stuff you take for heights. <laughs> high heels? <laughs> no, no, he doesn't wear high heels. Not my man Saul. So round four of a scheduled ten. We mentioned earlier that Hitchroff has never been past the fifth round. So Melendez released his corner hopes that once we go past that fifth round, and Melendez can perhaps start to dictate things. But right now, he's taking a lot of power punches. Here's the way Teddy Alves has this fight scored. Three rounds to none for the Ukrainian Hitchroff over Melendez. Those of you scoring at home, same result. Three you, know, you know, I see a concession made by Hitchroff early in this fight. And in some ways, it shows you that he thinks he's human. He's not a monster, even though he's 8 0 with eight knockouts. He doesn't have an S on his chest. But it shows you that he can do other things. He can adjust a little bit. But he's human. That he sees that he has not run over Melendez, like a lot of people thought he might do, myself included. Answer, answer and he's boxing more. That's a concession. Because he wasn't stop, doing stop, that early, stop. Todd. Early on, he was doing Mike Tyson stuff. Coming right out and looking to blow Melendez right out of the ring. Could it be fatigue a little bit, perhaps? That's not fatigue. It's concern. It's worry. It's brains. It's intellect that he knows that he didn't get rid of this veteran, and he made an adjustment. He, he's thinking, you know, he's thinking, I better not put all my eggs in one basket. Just looking for a knockout. He's a little concerned about going to rounds. So he's boxing. He's using his jab. He's using his legs a little bit. He's doing things that you haven't really seen him do before. In other words... He's having a learning moment in the ring. And that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to put fighters in with opponents that they have learning moments, that they deal with different things, that they have to overcome different things, overcome doubt, you know, overcome sometimes a little bit of a lack of confidence for a moment. 
and realize that they can handle it, they can pull himself together, they can make an adjustment. And again, he's not just moving forward, seeking to destroy anymore. He's picking his spots now, and he's boxing. You can see the swelling around both of Melendez's eyes right now. And Hitchroff's trainer, Gary Stark Jr., says that they like to call Hitchroff Duran. That's the nickname they gave him because he's vicious, like Roberto Duran. Well, right now he's boxing. And Duran could box too. And that's what he's doing right now. Now Hitchroff's not using only his physicality, you know, he's using the stuff upstairs, the cerebral stuff, his brains. We're live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Round five of a scheduled 10 between Evgen Hitchroff, the Ukrainian Lion, 8-0, eight, no, eight knockouts, wearing the red trunks, taking on Jorge Melendez out of Puerto Rico, who's 28-4-1 with 26 KOs. You mentioned the trainer for Hitchroff, Gary Stark. Gary Stark is a trainer in the Doc Atlas Foundation Cops and Kids gyms in Staten Island in Brooklyn. We have three of those gyms. He trains the fighters in one of them, does a terrific job with them, and he's also the trainer of one of the kids that came out of those gyms, Marcus Brown, who's a top prospect right now as a light heavyweight, an Olympian who's undefeated and will be fighting in April. Well, if you are Gary Stark Jr., what are you telling your protege right now as he enters round five? Well, I'm not positive what Gary Stark Jr. would be telling him, but Gary Stark Sr., <laughs> who's actually does have a junior in his family uh, I think he'd be telling him do what you're doing you know we're proud of you kid you know you're boxing you're being smart you're being the boss but you're not putting all your eggs in your basket and if the knockout's gonna come it's gonna come by doing good work by doing good basic work using your jab which he wasn't using the first couple rounds going to the body picking your spots keeping Melendez the veteran a little bit off balance and again if it comes, it'll come the right way. You won't be trying to force it. And let the rounds just fly by. Keep your concentration on your work. Don't think about going somewhere you've never been before. And right now, if Heathrow does have to come out for a sixth round, he will be going into territory. Uh, well, was that low, low? Yeah, that was low. Well, at least he's okay. behaving like it was low. Okay. And the referee uh, top, obviously top. is being influenced by it. Here it is, Tony Good. Weeks Jr. Let's see. Good? Yep. Yeah, that was low. Okay, here we go. Time in. Let's go. But it's nice to see, if you're a fan of Melendez, how the Puerto Rican is now pushing the tempo here. Well, he sees a change. He sees what I see. He sees that Heatro came out looking to get rid of Murley, and he sees that there's been a change in Heatro. So that's giving him a little confidence that, in other words, he's saying to himself, well, this guy respects me now. He knows he's, you know, he's not just going to get rid of me that easily. Maybe I'll start going after him a little bit. And maybe I'll start putting some doubt in the undefeated Heatro's mind a little bit as he maybe goes to a round he's never been before and make him feel. Nice uppercut there for Hitro. You know, make him feel that he's got to work and he's got a lot of rounds in front of him instead of letting it be an easy pace for him. Now Melendez trying to suffocate Hitchroff, staying right on top of him. And a nice right hand there by Hitchroff. And they exchange big punches as we go to the bell. Things can he expect to sense and experience for the first time? Well, it's all mental. I mean, he's in shape, Todd. He's gotten these rounds in the gym, believe me. Knowing the guys that train him and knowing the business, he's probably gotten 10 rounds many times in the gym. So he knows physically he can go the distance. Now it's psychological. It's mentally about being able to keep yourself together and know you can do it in the fight, not having those doubts, which will creep in. Because it's one thing doing it in the gym, it's another thing doing in the ring. Stop, stop, and he's stop. landed some heavy shots as Hitchroff, perhaps psychologically, is he thinking, wow, this guy's not reacting to my shots like most guys do. I need to perhaps change things up a little bit. Well, he did that already. That's why I said a few rounds ago, he did change things. Pay attention, kid. <laughs> well, at this point, you saw him coming out firing from the get-go in this round. There's a straight jab, a hard one, too. Listen, he's boxing. You can see again, he's boxing. He made an adjustment. There's the scorecard. I have it as shutout. 
the heat drop. As you can see, he started boxing several rounds ago when he realized that, you know, Melendez was showing a good chin, was showing that experience. So again, Heatroff started to box a little bit more, settle down a little bit more, and maybe in his mind, pace himself a little bit more, thinking that, hey, I might have to go past five rounds, finally, for the first time in my career. Like I mentioned earlier, Hitchroff said the knockout would come, but it would come after the fourth round. And we are after the fourth round in the sixth of the scheduled ten. I don't like the body language of Hitchroff. I'll be honest with you, stepping back, pulling down on his trunks, taking a deep breath. Nice combination there. You can see that. Going past five rounds, having a guy in front of him that he probably thought he was going to get rid of. You can see that it's on his mind. Again, he's human. He's not a monster. There are no monsters. There are no boogeymen. And we find that out all the time in his ring. And now Melendez is starting to take charge a little in this round. Or making at least an effort to do that. A real big effort to do that. Oh, and that got Melendez rocked. And now one, two, three, and Melendez is off balance. Can he survive this onslaught by the Ukrainian line? This would be a good spot for Heathrow to step back when he's inside and throw an uppercut. Because if you notice, Melendez on the inside. Oh! Now right Melendez hand. is going to fall in a little bit. This would be a good spot for an uppercut here. Does he have the wherewithal to throw it right now as he's being beaten pillar to post by Hitchcock? The schedule 10, and the sixth round was Hitchcock's best round as he had Melendez backing against the ropes, stumbling around, landing power shot after power shot. And again, you could see Hitchcock the same mentality now. You know, what would you have expected, Todd, honestly? You know, a guy who's a sick and destroy guy, he's been that early in his career. You know, he tried it early in a fight, didn't work. He started boxing, and then he hurts him really badly. He hurts Melendez in the last round. You would probably think he drove, comes out to get after him again. You know, to jump on him, to sick and destroy. But no, you can see Hedroff, he knows he's in there with a the veteran. He's worried a little bit. Not worried to the point that normal people worry. You know, but as far as the fighter, worried that he doesn't use up too much of that gasoline, but he knows that he's in rounds that he's never been in before. So he's pacing himself. You scored that last round 10-8, despite there not being a knockdown, in your opinion. He beat him like he did knock him down. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it was so dominant and so close to being a knockdown or a standing eight count, if there was a standing eight count here, allowed to be administered that I thought it was dominant enough to make it a 10-8 round. But again, it's, it's interesting to me to just follow the, just to understand the psychology oh, of the fighter. Left again, hook, a big one from Hitchhoff. And Melendez wisely steps back. And again, Hitchhoff taking his time. If it comes, it comes. That's his mindset right now. And if it comes, it's been coming two nice counters from the left hook. He's been countering with that left hook and timing that left hook. He threw up just perfectly as Melendez throws something. The left hook of Heathrow gets back before Melendez gets his hand back. Now Melendez content to just keep his back against the ropes. Not sure how wise that is. When Heathrow does his most damage, again, it's off time shots, it's off counter shots. Basically what I'm saying is when he makes Melinda's mess, when he makes a miss and then fills a hole. Not necessarily when he gets off first and leads, because Melendez could block that. But when Melendez misses something, that's where he drops come back with that left hook and connect it before Melendez could recover. And there was a good body shot too. And a counter punch looked like an uppercut there from Hitchrock. This is the kind of fight that the corner has to really look at. The referee has to look closely at Melendez to think whether or not he's taking too much punishment.
take a look at the end of the last round. Just look at Melendez. I mean, he's, he's gone for a moment there. I really think that the corner, the referee has to keep a close watch on Melendez and maybe really be thinking about stopping this fight if the trend doesn't change. Because, look, I know it's easy to stop a fight when a guy's on the floor, but stop, stop, when a guy's stop, stop. taking punishment, round after round after round, that's where it counts that you have the right eye, a critical eye, an educated eye on a fighter and know when to stop it. I think, it's getting, I think it's getting to that point now. And Melendez takes a knee because of that body shot. And the, that's it. the, the that's corner it. right now looking that's to it. grab the towel. That's it. That's it. No, no, no. That's it. Game, game effort for Melendez. But as I said, taking a lot of punishment throughout the night, particularly the last several rounds. And if you're in the corner of Evgen Hitchroff, you're probably thinking, you know what? This was the perfect fight for us. We got a knockout, but we got a lot of work against a veteran guy and showed what we could do when we had to box. You're so right, Todd. Todd, you're so right. I mean, I said it earlier in the fight that you're looking for a learning moment. You're developing young athletes here and you need the right kind of fights to develop them. This was a perfect fight to develop this young heat drop, where he goes into deep waters, he goes somewhere, he never went before, and he asked himself some questions. Believe me, he asked himself some questions during this night, and he had the right answers at the end of the night. This is a development fight for heat drop. So heat drop goes longer in a fight than he's had to go his entire career, but still gets his ninth knockout. And let's take a look at that body work. Good body work. That right hand downstairs, then upstairs, oh. then back downstairs. That body shot, you said it, you pointed it out. That body shot, that right hand underneath, at the end of the day, is what caused that. A delayed reaction knockdown. Again, right hand to the body, upstairs. Good right hand underneath there. That effect is taking place right now. And down goes Melendez. Finally, he capitulated. He gave in to that pain, to that loss of air, and to that guy who kept coming forward. A fantastic performance by the Ukrainian Lion for the official particulars back up to Thomas Trice. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. 42 seconds of round number eight. The right corner advises our referee in charge, Tony Weeks, to stop the contest. Your winner by way of technical knockout and still undefeated, Yevgen, the Ukrainian Lion, Petro. So onward and upward for Hitrov, who's now 9-0. Like I said earlier, they are fast-tracking him for the top. Looky, looky, Teddy. Sab Judah, one of the greats. He'll be 